Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your patience on this beautiful afternoon in cold Stockholm, Sweden. I'm so happy to see so many, many interested people in color, because today we're going to talk about colors and the colors of 2025 plus. So pay attention now, because I will tell you the truth. I'm joking. My name is Carl Johan Bertilsson. I have had the big honor and work with color for more than 26 years globally with industries, universities, art architects and designers that like to work with color and love color and with the help of the NCS color system. So I will take you through a little bit what our forecast is about, what we believe would happen in 2025. The reason I wear this today is because I try to summarize a little bit what we will talk about. We see a drift towards colors becoming a little bit more dark. But in this darkness of colors, we need beacons of light. And one of the things that we see and that you will see in this presentation is a huge focus on bluish colors. Preferably with a little bit of glitter. I will take you to see 2025. Before we go and see the actual colors of 2025, I would like to talk a little bit the way we work with color. When we started to work with color trends, and this is a long time ago, um, we said the only way we should work with color, because we are a square-minded scientific color institute, is that what, when we do something, it has to be based on real things. So we base ourselves on existing science, and we work with leading color experts in this world to compare and to understand in what directions the colors are moving. One of the things that we follow very, very closely is the color psychology of the markets. Because keep in mind that color is psychology. There are no new colors. If somebody said that, oh, I have a new... No, there are no new colors. All colors already exist. What happens is that our minds move in the color space to prefer certain color areas more than others. And there are reasons of this. So we follow what we call the repetitive cycle of color trends. I'm sure you have seen this before. Which is very simple. If we are bombarded with a lot of color impressions from a certain color area, we get tired of these color impressions. And when we get tired of these color impressions, we want to go to the other extreme. So we go in a step-by-step -step direction usually. This is not the whole truth, but it's a part of the truth. And if you can see this, we can also divide things into what we call slow-moving trends, like everything has been so white and gray for the last 20 years or even 30 years. And that is slowly moving, that we're beginning to embrace and welcome colors again to our lives. Yay! Because nothing makes us more unhappy if everything is just white and gray. Then we have the fast-moving trends, and that's what we we'll talk about today, right? Where we're moving into a very high chromatic area, era that we have been now. We have a purplish, bluish step that purifies our brain, and now we're heading in a direction which makes colors still chromatic, because we love color again, but a little bit darker. This is one part of the psychology that we always, always follow. Fortunately, we have a documentation from many, many, many years behind. As we work with color and we sell color, we can also document how things are moving throughout the years, right? Both in hue and in nuance, because remember when it comes to color trends, many times it is more a question of what nuance it is, whether it's a dark, light or chromatic color than whether it's red, blue, green or yellow, right? Or sometimes hue is important too. 
but we always have to work with two dimensions, all of these dimensions of color, right? The trend scouting goes on all year. We follow continuously what is happening on the market. And then in September, we gather this group of color experts, and this time in Milano, where we discuss and we compare. We talk about global color trends. We're not talking about Swedish color trends. We talk about global color trends. We can't talk about trends that influence all industries, not only furniture, interior design, fashion, automotive, product design. And we try to find the synergies of both geographical areas and industries, right? And we have a lot of fun. This year, I was the only man. That's why I tried to get my belly in a little bit. Which is not so good, so we need more male knowledge into this group. But we have a wonderful group of color experts for all over this planet. Many of them are CMF designers. We have Astrid from BASF Automotive. We have Emma and Manuela and all their company in Baulab, CMF designers from Italy, Milano, right? We have me. We have Laura, who is one of the leading color experts. She talks a lot about the ethical colors. But she has been in our trend team for many, many, many years. Nakara design our color architects. Toulouse, France. We have Peggy Van Allen, who is the president of Color Marketing Group, the biggest trend association in the world, non-profit. She works with the North American or the American colors. And we have, for the first time this year, Xua Ying from Young Design in Shanghai, a leading CMF designer worldwide. All together, we sit down and we make forecasts and we compare, we find synergies and we discuss the different drivers, right? And this is why it is so important to have a system, a structure, where to find the synergies, both in hue or in nuance, to see where do we overlap, where do we agree, right? Let's look at the external drivers because a lot of things is happening in our, in our world that affects us, that affects our psychology and the colors that we prefer to have. Not everything affects our color preferences, so we have to understand what affects this. It's a global analysis of our global state of mind, being that color is psychology, we have to take the temperature of a planet to understand what is relevant for us. One of the things, the very, very important things that kind of affects everything is that we're talking about a year which is a blurred multiverse. I will come back and explain a little bit more what this is all about. But it's a world we're coming into that we already live in that is very blurry. One word that came in time after time was absurd. That everybody's seeing that there is so many absurd things happening. Absurd meaning that they're not normal, they're not standard. Right? Because we're coming to a world where we don't know what is real and what is not real. What is true and what is fake. It makes us nervous, it makes us think, it makes us analyze, which is super interesting. It's really kind of worrisome, but at the same time it releases a creativity that is fantastic. Because we do not any longer stick to norms. We have full freedom to explore and create new realities. Right? The blurred multiverse, I found this, I think it's a good illustration, kind of you know, takes away the breath almost. And when I came to the exhibition this morning, I saw this, it kind of matched perfectly, exactly what we have been talking about. We talk about darker colors, we talk about silver, I'll come back to that. We talk about undefined forms, absurd realities. I think Stockholm Design or Stockholm Furniture Fair had a very interesting picture. 
In the sixth century before Christ, there was a Greek guy, Anaximander, who began talking about an alternative reality. He began talking about multiverse, right? And since then, there has been so many discussions. Is this the only universe that exists? Are there other alternative existence or alter worlds that exist that we don't know of, we don't understand? So there's been a lot of philosophical discussions. But the fact is, and one of the things that affects a lot our choice of colors, our reality, our design, is that multiverse is already here. But it's a real multiverse. We have one foot in the real world. We have one foot in the digital world. And the reality of the matter is in 2025, a lot of people say that we will put the foot on the moon again. People want to go to Mars. So we have another universe to explore. So we are in different universes. That's our reality. And we want to see the same things in our realities. Right? This is on pictures that will be on 2024, but you know, the movie industry is focusing a lot on the multiverse phenomenon more than ever. This is also blurring the way we picture ourselves. I'm sure you heard about the TikTok eras. I belong to the dinosaur generation, so I had to learn about this. But the TikTok eras, is that you are, you have a certain personality, right? And so that I wake up and say, no, today I will be a different personality. So you create a completely different personality and you post on TikTok, right? And you become something completely different just for a day or two, right? TikTok eras. We are going in to a world that a lot of us talk about liquid modernity, liquid human beings. We are floating around in a world that is not defined. Right? This is being translated in the design world, and we see a lot of this coming now. Everything is blurry and is floating around. We talk a lot about halfway colors, which is tricky for when you represent one color, or the color of the year is this. No, we see that what we want to see are colors that are floating together. That is something that is very, very important that we see coming very, very strongly, right? We see the multiverse mentality being translated into patterns. It's a world. This is a, you know, it's a digital reality. It's a multiverse identity. And the more we work with the multiverse or the metaverse, the digital world, and with AI, if you went to Milano, in, in the, 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 the furniture, um, the Salone del Mobile in the Milano, you probably saw there was a lot of talk about democratic design. Because with the help of AI, suddenly everybody can do design, right? So suddenly to do design becomes very easy. But when AI creates something, it becomes not very human, quite boring. So we see an enormous drift towards doing design now that should not look artificial. It has to look human. And the more human, the better, right? We are going into a very nostalgic period where we want imperfection. Vinyl records, you know, are breaking all sales right now because we want to hear this... It shouldn't be perfect. It sh we should be able to hear that it's human, right? We have a retro design. Imperfection is very important. And I, I was walking around here at Stockholm Furniture Fair. Very interesting. There's so many objects here that you can see. I mean, it's only a human being can put everything together, right? It is rough. It is tarnished. It looks like some, sometimes even a kid put things together because some industries are doing this just to make it feel human. Like in this case, an eight-year-old makes the patterns for this company, right? 
So this is something that is very important that we believe will be also so important for 2025. Let's look at trend number one. And trend number one, we have to go back to one of the most important things in all our reality. And that is the climate change, because it affects all of us. Before other years, we have talked about climate change in kind of a more poetic way. We have talked about biophilia, we have talked about animism, bringing, you know, living closer to nature and being happy and everything. Now it's a much harsher reality. It's all about self-reliance, about survival. If we cannot, if we don't behave on this planet, we will disappear as human beings. The nature, the earth will, will not disappear, it will continue. So we need to learn how to live with that reality and it pushes us in a certain direction, in a mindset, right? Because climate change touches us all. We have lack of water, we have too much water, we have fires that is burning you know, our neighborhoods. And this is something, whether we like it or not, it affects our mindset, right? This is an AI portrait when we ask them to paint the possible future. This is what AI believes the future is. I mean, it's quite harsh. So when this happens, when we have all of these impressions of our world, we kind of move in a certain direction. And what do we do? We reach out, we reach out to Mother Earth. And there's a Greek word that we like very much for Mother Earth that we call Gaia. Beautiful from the mythology of the Greek mythology, which is the Mother Earth. This is who we want to embrace now. What does that mean? It means that for years, we have addressed, we have talked about the green of the nature. We have embraced yellowish green colors a lot. Now water is becoming the core issue. We're moving back to water. We want to have relation with water. Remember what I said about glitter. Research shows that one of the reasons why we like glitter so much is it, it's because it reminds us of water and the sunshine glittering on the surface of the water. It causes well-being. It gives us harmony. So we believe that in 2025 we see a very important movement towards very blue colors, greenish blue colors preferably, and glitter. Because we still want to feel this happiness. And we want the effects. We don't, want, we don't want flat things. We want things to happen, right? So glitter and water is the core of this Gaia trend, which is trend number one. Key color number one for this trend is the perfect mix of blue and green, a B50G color, half blue and half green. And once again, moving away from the green of the nature to more watery greenish blue colors. Together with a very pale yellowish glittery color, imagining the surface of a water in the sunshine glittering. Those two colors together we see as a very, very important combinations. Together with other very bluish colors. In this constellation of colors, what we see as we are moving away from something that has been so important, the yellow greens, because nature is yellowish green, we see that we have a green color. Green could be said within brackets as a new color, because it's not natural. The nature is not green only. The nature is yellowish green. So we see that in this constellation, if we want to be a little bit in metaverse, a pure green will give us that feeling. So we have six colors, as you can see, very similar in hue, all around the blue, the pure green and a complementary yellow, which guarantees that they belong to each other, but they pop each other. 
but they belong to each other because they're complementary, right? You can also see that they are very similar in whiteness. And this you will see, which is quite curious. We don't know this when we do this, but when we analyze, we see at the end that it's quite curious. So once we have done that, we see that they're very quite similar in whiteness. And this you will see in other trends also. So whiteness similarities is something that we see is coming very much in 2025. So this is Gaia. We talked a lot about CMF, color and material, of course. We will not address the material this time. But we see a lot of things coming from the oceans, actually. Seaweed, algae, all of these things, even material we can make leather shoes from, you know. So this is the Gaia trend. Let's look at trend number two. Trend number two is what I addressed in the very beginning. We are moving in a direction where colors are becoming more and darker, more and more dark, or darker and darker, right? At the same time, they are becoming very light. We are living in a world where contrasts are very, very important. Sometimes they are extreme. As human beings, whether it's very light or it's very dark, we still need to feel comfort. It doesn't matter if this man, this man wins or this woman wins, we still have to find comfort in all realities. And this is being pictured a lot by the contrasting colors. Comfort is very important even though we have dark colors and light colors. Last year, we began talking about the arrival of the purple colors, which are very powerful colors. We see for 2025 that purple is taking a bigger, bigger role. And this has to do that is perfect combination also when you have an interior, we have a space that is a dark color, specifically some colors we use as beacons of light that gives us discomfort, like purplish colors, right? We see that together with the purple color, we have a color that is greenish-yellowish. For years now, the yellow colors have been very popular. If you look at this stand, it's fantastic with this yellow, pure yellow colors. And we have seen that one of the difficult areas for us human beings to receive and accept are the slightly greenish yellow colors. But we are seeing that this is taking very important place right now. We are moving away more towards green now, but not natural green. It should be quite like a neon green as the beacon of light that we need, right? This is being pushed a lot by the other metaverses, right? Or the other multiverses or the other universes we live in. Like I said, something that we haven't really been affected a lot by is the space traveling. But the thing is, 2025, this will not be decisive, but we believe that this will push this preference more than it is today because Moon will be on the agenda 2025. Trend number two we call on-off. Light, dark, with beacons of light that is greenish, yellowish, and purple. So we have a G70Y, which is slightly more greenish than the yellow colors we had before, together with the purple colors. This makes a beautiful couple, complementary, great combination. And then we surround this with light and dark surroundings. Together, we create a space, we create a product that becomes extremely interesting, right? And as you can see, they are perfectly complementary. They're opposite each other in the color circle. They pop each other, but they belong to each other. And once again, if you look at the new one scheme, they are very similar in whiteness which makes them very easy to combine, right? The material we talked a lot about for this trend is the new generation of pigments coming from the recycled plastics that we're using. Before the plastic kind of was more like a uh, constellation of big 
pieces. Now we make new colors. And these green and purple colors are coming very, very strongly. On and off, trend number two. Let's look at trend number three. Ooh. Trend number three. It's not only about color. It's about addressing all of our senses, right? Because research shows that combination of colors and sound to begin with creates well-being. Maybe not this sound. Because something I want to talk about before this is something that is pushing this trend a lot. And that's my generation. My generation of dinosaurs, unconscious, spoiled boomers who don't care about the end of the world. We just want to have fun and spend our money. Right? What is happening in 2025 is that we have a new generation taking over, protesting against this horrible behavior of my generation and replacing this by a more harmonious approach to our world, right? So we don't want these high stimulant, you know, this party color so much. Look more for low stimulant colors. We talk about Generation Z that we've talked about, so this depressed, you know, this, all of these things. But the fact of the matter is that the Gen Z growing up now, becoming the leaders, you know, the manager of companies, is the new conscious generation. The young generation are the ones who will change this planet to our favor. For us, it's too late. We just want to have a party. This generation, we want to sit down, knitting. When we, I came here and saw the installation at the entrance, which I think is perfect, by um, Forma Fantasma, uh, the head designers, they have a reading area where you can sit and actually go through paper and books. It's perfect. It's exactly what we're talking about. This is a generation promoting staycation. My generation, we want to travel. We want to continue polluting. The generation here is staycation. And asking yourselves or ourselves, who are we really? What we would like to be? What is this all about? This is the new conscious generation, which is very important. We we'll look a lot at neurodesign, and people love to talk about neurodesign a lot. Neurodesign or the neuroscience is a very deep, complex science. But it's all about making things better for the human being, understanding the behavior. I talked about the senses, the sound and the color. There is research actually showing that the combination of certain light and certain sounds can actually cure, not cure maybe, but at least help Alzheimer's disease. I heard that on the Swedish radio that are quite interesting. This generation, this trend is all about appealing all of our five senses to find harmony and well-being, right? One of the interesting things in our workshop in Milano was that a lot of the people from China, United States, and Europe were addressing the enormous focus that is now on our interior, not our psychological interior, but the physical interior. Because for some reason, in understanding who we are, we get inspiration by opening up our bodies and get inspiration how we actually look like, because we all look the same on the inside. And the colors that were dramatically similar for all of these regions, different industries, were inspired by our interior. Warm colors, soft colors, colors that I have seen already here at, at the exhibition, at the fair, that will take much more importance for a lot of people, right? We call this trend inner. And this was the colors that we actually worked the least with because they were so crystal clear from all parts that we didn't have to discuss much about this.
These are warm colors. And as I said, colors are becoming darker. Not that chromatic anymore, but still we want to see color, but not too much. So we have a Y70, our dark red color, yellowish, together with a little bit more, little darker reddish colors, the key colors of this trend. And together with other colors that together makes a beautiful constellation of colors that gives us warmth, har harmony, well-being. This is something that makes us relax, calm down, right? And I once again repeat, and this is, we don't do this deliberately. We'd analyze this afterwards. If you look at the position in the triangle, you can see that they're very similar in whiteness. Very interesting. According to research, I wanted just a parenthesis, according to research, when we talk about color similarities and what we prefer as human beings, whiteness similarity is one of the things that we prefer the most. And that is quite interesting. So we see a lot of similar colors in whiteness. All of the colors are on the warm side. They have some kind of redness inside, which makes them belong to each other in a very nice way, right? In this trend, there was a lot of discussion of this natural material, specifically hemp, that is being used so much now in architectural and product design. And hemp is a perfect product to talk about when we talk about inner trend. And let's look at the last trend, number four. What is this all about? We have now talked about the multiverse. And I would say this is perhaps the trend that that's a little bit further on in time, a little avant-garde. But the multiverse affects our lives. It affects our mindset. And in a way that we want to live in all of these different universes at the same time. And when we live in the different universes, we want to have a similar kind of relation to the colors that we surround ourselves with. Okay? To be able to do this, we kind of go up into the clouds. We become liquid humans. We become in a very ethereal state of mind. Right? Being pushed by these different realities that we live in, the way we work, the way we design, right? And we can see a lot of examples now, this blurriness, trying to manifest that even though it's something in this world, we are trying all to implement a feeling that we are in different worlds at the same time right, between the digital and the physical. I was in Tucson, Arizona with Laura Perriman making some experimentation of using new pigments to make colors from food waste, for carbon dioxide, from different kind. And what kind of colors do you get from this kind of new material? This is what you get. Quite a washed out, light colors. And once again, perfect, not perfect always, a little bit imperfect. But this is something that we see is coming very strongly from 2025 and on. The light, imperfect, washed out colors, right? The color should be ethereal, like you are in the clouds, together with silver. And I saw this on the poster of Stockholm Design Fair, you have this silver chair, which is perfect to understand that we need to have in this constellation of the multiverse mentality, right? So trend number four, ladies and gentlemen, the last one is called ethereal. Key colors for this is we are moving from the very dark colors to the very light colors. So we have a very light bluish color, reddish bluish, and a very light reddish bluish colors, R30B and R70B colors, which kind of represents the state of mind we want to have. Together with other colors, silver color, silver is becoming very, very important for 2025. Coral red, we see everywhere in the exhibition here. We see that the coral red will take less space, but needs to exist. Today, we use this coral red color for bigger surfaces. 
It takes a lot of space. What we see is that this red color should exist either as a beginning or an end of a color constellation that we create. Right? Trend number four, ethereal. This is not whiteness similarity. If you look at the scheme in the triangle, you can see it's a blackness similarity. They are all similar in blackness. Similar in hue, within enough distance to make them very easy to work together with. And the coral red, once again, we believe become in this story, in this trend, a much more accented color. Right? And once again, addressing silver as one of the core materials to be used together with these colors. So we have Gaia, on off, inner and ethereal. That's our forecast for 2025 plus. If you look at the colors now, you can see that before, for this year, we talked a lot about red colors, pure red colors. And you can see a lot of red here. We're moving away from the pure red to a much more yellowish red or bluish red. Purple is taking much more space or position and a lot of blue colors, right, when it talks to hue. Colors are moving also in directions of becoming darker and lighter and less chromatic. We still want and we embrace the chromatic colors, but not that chromatic, not that dramatic, a little more subtle colors, right? This is the evolution from 2022, just for CU, if you put them together. And if you can look at 2025, you can clearly see that the darker area is taking more place, the lighter, right? And the chromatic is not that, va there's not that big variation in the moral colors, right? And this is if we look at the NCS plots, how they move in the circle, in the hue circle, and of course, in the triangles. With this, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you very much for your assistance, your patience, and I wish you good luck with your colors. Because remember, without color, there is nothing. Thank you very much.